Initially, when you create or import 2D patterns and you've got the sync option on, it will be immediately positioned in the 3D window as well. However, until you change the pattern's 3D position, you can reposition it in the 2D window and it will be automatically repositioned in 3D as well. Once you start to change the pattern's position in the 3D window, changing its 2D position won't affect it anymore. For example, I'm moving this piece in 3D and now altering its position in 2D will no longer affect the 3D position. Let's add another piece and again I can reposition it in 2D first, but once I've changed its position in 3D, I can move the pieces independently in 2D and 3D. Selecting a pattern in 3D highlights it in 3D as well as in 2D, so you can easily see which piece you've selected. And vice versa, selecting a piece in 2D highlights it in 3D as well. Furthermore, you can select several pieces in 2D, they become selected in 3D, and now you can reposition them together. The 3D gizmo is designed for accurate pattern positioning in 3D. You can move the pattern along the X, Y, and Z axes by grabbing the corresponding axis, or you can rotate it around each axis by grabbing the corresponding circle using the left mouse button. You can also bend a pattern piece around the X or Y axis by clicking on the corresponding axis, and you can see that it gets highlighted, and scrolling the mouse wheel. However, you can't bend around the Z axis, which is perpendicular to the screen. For example, let's position this pattern manually at the back of the avatar. So once I move it beyond the avatar, I can then rotate it and reposition it the way I like. Anchor points are designed to quickly position the patterns at specific places around the avatar. The anchor points have different colors. There's green for the body, blue for the neck, yellow for the arms, and purple for the legs. To use the anchor points, simply select the pattern and click on the desired anchor point. The pattern will be quickly positioned there and bent accordingly. For example, this piece should be positioned around the leg, like this, or like this. Or maybe I want to place this piece as a sleeve around the arm, so that can be done as well. In order to switch between the 3D gizmo and anchor point modes, you can use either the Alt-A hotkey or the corresponding view menu command. Another useful feature that we've partially discussed already during the sewing and pleats overview is the folding feature. The folding can be done by using the internal lines or the seam lines. In this men's jacket example, we need to fold the lapel by the internal line. When I select this internal line, I can expand the Line Fold property panel and select the angle and the direction of pre-folding. Let me do the same for the other side. The direction of the folding can be easily found by selecting either clockwise, counterclockwise, or uniform. The uniform option folds both parts of the folding pattern, while clockwise and counterclockwise options fold only one part while the other maintains its position. You can enable or disable the folding during the simulation by checking the enabled box. If I disable the folding, the simulated cloth will ignore the crease. If enabled, the system will try to keep the folding angle during the simulation. Let's try the simulation. As you can see, the system keeps the fold in place. Here's another example where pre-folding can be very useful when positioning the patterns in complex designs. Here we create an internal line and pre-fold the pattern like this and have a much better chance to get the draping right. Notice that we didn't select the enabled option because we only need this folding for the preliminary positioning and it won't be taken into account during the simulation. Finally, you can also specify the folding angle between two patterns by the seam line in between them. For example, for the shirt, we want to make sure that the collar is turned down towards the shoulders. So I select the seam line between the collar and the collar band. 
Then, in the seam properties, I specify a desired angle, which I'd like to hold during the simulation. Let's start the draping, and with a little help of the mouse, we should put the collar in place. That's it! We have a nice angle between the two pieces. Draper includes two cloth simulation engines. One is developed using position-based dynamics, or PBD. The PBD can run on both GPU and CPU. When you have a suitable NVIDIA video card, like GeForce 970 or better, we can use the PBD on GPU and achieve real-time cloth simulation. The other one is based on the conjugate gradient method, or CG, which is not as fast, but it's more accurate and you can use it for more complex garments where collisions and self-collisions are important. For example, this top has a lot of self-collisions, so I'm selecting the CG backend. There are three presets, fast, standard, and exact. Exact is the slowest but most accurate setting, and it takes better care of the collisions. However, for most cases, the standard should suffice. Let's see how it works. This top was draped in two stages. First we draped the back in two front pieces, and then draped the central piece. As you can see, there are no entanglements, despite the multiple layers and self-collisions. We can move the fabric around and see the layers behave correctly. Here's another example of a complex multi-layer design, where we can take advantage of the CG backend with several draping steps. Let's see how it goes. First we stitch the lower, under layers, and then the upper layers above, and then the rest. The CG-based backend utilizes multi-core processors. So if we take a look at the CPU load, we can see that all the cores are in use. As you can see, this complex dress is draped nicely. All of the layers are in place, and there's no entanglement. There are a few different ways you can view the clothes in Avatar. You can view the clothes as textured. You can view the clothes as wireframe. You can view the clothes as translucent or disabled. While the simulation is running, you can also use the tension map and observe where the garment is loose or tight and stretched. For example, purple is very tight and white is very loose. The intensity of the tension map depends on your fabric stretch resistance settings. For instance, lowering the stretch resistance will result in less sensitivity to the fabric stretching and thus a lower intensity of the tension map. You can also modify how you prefer to see the avatar. It can be painted with underwear painted onto the avatar skin, or flat without painted underwear. It can be wireframe or disabled. Let's try a simple exercise, a simple pair of leggings which we've imported from a DXF file. As usual, the patterns might be randomly positioned in 2D, so let's first reposition them in a more convenient way. Now let's position the patterns around the avatar. To do it easily and quickly, let's use the anchor points. I'm switching to the anchor points mode by hitting Alt-A. Now we can quickly position the patterns close to their 3D places. After this preliminary pattern positioning is done, I hit Alt-A again to return to the 3D gizmo mode and make the final position adjustments more carefully. Now we need to seam the patterns together, which is pretty easy to do for this simple design example.
Let's just add some color and texture for a more realistic look. And we're ready for the first draping. But before we start draping, I'd like to show that we can highlight the seam lines, internal lines, and outlines from the view menu. We can also see the garment in different modes, such as wireframe, translucent or see-through, tension map, and disabled. Let's start the draping by pressing the Start Simulation button. Done. While the simulation is running, you can switch to the Tension Map mode. The Tension Map reflects how much the cloth is stretching, which also depends on the elastic property of the fabric, which we'll discuss in more detail in another video. I just want to show here that you can quickly see the difference in the Tension Map color based on the stretch resistance values. For these stretchy leggings, we can assume the stretch resistance is rather low. Let's do another example, a women's hoodie. After importing it, I want to position the patterns more conveniently. Next, I switch into the anchor point mode by hitting all day and quickly reposition the patterns in 3D. Then I need to copy and mirror paste the missing pieces and place them into the right 3D positions as well. Let's bend the sleeves more around the arms and add the missing half of the hood. I'm skipping the seam lines and texturing procedures here. And now we're ready to drape it. We'd love to see your creations, so please share them with us if you can.